Rooster Teeth just got caught with their hands in some slimy shit. And by slimy shit, I mean, holy fuck, how was this not brought to light sooner? Also, Rooster Teeth are fucking liars. They are always lying. Do not believe a goddamn word they say. None of the high people up there, none of the people in their main fucking clique are to be trusted. Of course, I already knew that. Most people already knew that at this point. But for the people who just haven't been able to reach that point yet. Rooster Teeth, you can't, you can't trust the fucking word they say. They're all idiots. They don't know what they're doing. And now, it has taken a toll on their own team members to the point that people were getting laid off. Half an animation staff was laid off by the guy heading Genlock because they were letting them get over, or paid overtime working over 40 hour work weeks every day, no days off, being promised things that were never going to be taken through and uh, losing sanity because of this crunch stuff. So, anyway, here's the background on it. The, this stuff technically started with the whole Shane letter because with the Shane letter, because there was some workplace abuse stuff going on over there. Well, not really workplace abuse stuff, but there was some stressful stuff with the production of Ruby Volume 2 that Shane detailed and Ruby Volume 3, and it was kind of rushed. Like, after Monty died, Ruby Volume 3 went into really rush mode. And with the conflicting vibes that the Rooster Teeth producers and all the other guys were giving the regular staff, you know, it got really stressful. And of course, in that letter, in between post-production of Volume 2 and pre-production for Volume 3, Monty was thinking about, and I think he was getting ready to move his staff all the way to California, so that way they wouldn't have to be near Rooster Teeth, Texas, because Rooster Teeth, Texas, of course, is garbage. And, you know, now this thing from Glassdoor, and it's been spread around on Tumblr, and I took a bunch of screenshots, and I'll have them at least pulling up during the video as it plays, but, I mean, holy hell. These are not good reviews that you want for your company. And these are from mostly former employees. And I'm pretty sure the only reason that uh, they have a two and a half star rating, because I watched part of the uh, Clownfish TV uh, video on this, and this is how it really came into light. But holy fuck, these are not good. No paid over from this is from April 5th. No paid overtime. Crunch is a major problem in the animation department due to unrealistic deadlines, poor planning, and decisiveness. Mandatory 10 to 12 hour days are mul for multiple months are common. Wow. Stress levels often very high due to harsh deadlines. Some producers tend to lie. Promotions are used as morale booster, not actual career advancement. So like they're promising positions, but yet those positions are never filled by the new hirees. And they also treat their new employees like shit. Hardly any time for depressional development. Professionalism can be a bit scarce. For example, people would draw penises on the boards throughout the studio. Which isn't kind of surprising. You know, Rooster Teeth's famous for cockbite. But there's also this thing. They don't have an employee of the month board. They have a cockbite of the month board. I know that it's a joke. It's probably pretty affectionate, but I mean... When you're treating your employees like dog shit, that tends to add a level of stress that wasn't there before. And it's like, wow. Nick, unrealistic deadlines. Okay, this is a big problem in the gaming industry. We know this. Not in Japan gaming industry, or at least with Nintendo. Nintendo, once there comes... They, they were willing to delay a game recently. So that way their employees were not stressed the hell out. And it pissed off the investors, but I mean, that's how Nintendo does their business. I'm like, okay, good. That's how you should be doing it. You should be caring for your employees. Like, no matter if the production has been going full speed ahead or the production has been really troubled because, like, you're trying to build a new gameplay engine or you're trying to find out how to get everything working, you know, people need time to develop it. 
all right and like like if crunch time wasn't crunch culture wasn't a thing a lot of games people would have a that people have started to hate over the years or at least did hate when it come out most of that stuff wouldn't have happened like think about mass effect 3 that one was that one was supposed to be released a year after mass effect 2 a year and it was only able to get patched to get pushed up till uh, March 2012 somehow because of just how much EA wanted to crunch that title and Dragon Age 2 that one was developed in barely a year and was shit <laughs> right, here's another one let me find one from May okay programming scheduling department has no idea how to time budget for animation has resulted in unnecessary preventable crunch company takes on projects that are too big for it to manage effectively not the highest pay compared to anime guild standards open office space gets noisy management is using a weird message to try to de-escalate hard feelings about crunch they're acting like counselors who are there to talk and try to find coping mechanisms to deal with crunch yeah i don't trust them they they want to they want to have their employees fucking go on about Trump and worker rights saying, oh, no, no, you're taking a, you're fucking up everything for the workers. Me, 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 me. Let's follow Ocasio-Cortez and get the full-blown socialism here. Now, nah, th that's gonna fuck your workers. It seems here they're wanting to fuck their workers. Bad. Alright, like, when you're, now, when your employee, employers are, like, trying to help you, they're trying to be like counselors and stuff, that's good, but when they're doing it just to stave off criticism or just doing it so that way they don't get in trouble because they know they fucked up i mean that's pretty bad this is a terrible idea considering that none of them are trained counselors oh shit okay now that's bad now if they're not trained that that could be a problem is they're obvious but more so they're obviously going to be biased in favor of what they want from us oh it makes me want to communicate with them even less. This past review, my manager criticized me for having negative energy during a terrible crunch period. We were, we were working 80 hours a week. But over 80 hour a week? And told me you should look for the silver lining with just bad advice. 80, 80 hour work week. Holy shit. No way I'd have the sanity for that. 80 hours? I'm barely having trouble. I'm having trouble getting barely seven hours of sleep at night. Holy fuck. Okay. Like, this is. I mean, this is horrible. This is fucking horrible. And then, like I said earlier, the guy who heads up Genlock, he fired half of the fucking Genlock animation staff after this last season fucking wrapped up. Half. While they had not gotten paid over time. Or, you know. The people who were promised positions that, you know, were doing their jobs, not getting it, treating their employees like dog shit. I mean, wow. If this doesn't bring the shame, this, this, I mean, honestly, this stuff brings the shame letter back, has to bring the shame letter back into the issue, because that means, oh man, this shit's been going on for a while. I mean, it's really spiked up over the last few months and the past two years, I believe. Because that's because more and more bad reviews have been coming in throughout the time, but this is th this means that something has been happening to Rooster Teeth since Monty Ohm died, or so, or at least a couple years before that, that has led to some bad people getting jobs there. Okay, and remember, this is the same Gray Haddock who, you know, people who had any remotely negative criticism towards Genlock, he would block them on Twitter and, you know, pull a Ryan Johnson and basically call them man babies. You know, that's the same guy. So that the same guy who doesn't even have the dignity to try to defend his fucking work on uh, Twitter without having to block people is the one is the one at least partly or at least halfway responsible for shitty work conditions under his own under the company under the company. And also, for his, uh, 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 let me rephrase that. He's the one responsible for the shitty work conditions in his and the animation department 
as well as for his own fucking show where he routinely blocks people who have any remotely negative criticisms over his work, which is not how an artist should handle themselves. But of course, Ghostbusters 2016 proved you can do that and get away with it as long as you're pandering to the fucking far left. Jesus, even people... Like, Jesus, this is... I've never seen a company so disgustingly out of touch with its fan base before. And I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought Star Wars was getting out of touch with this fan base. I thought Ghostbusters was out of touch with this fan base. No, Rooster Teeth is the most out of touch ever. And remember, this is coming off of the Vic Mignogna stuff too. All right, Rooster Teeth has been just falling down. All right, their employees are connected to the people involved in the Vic Mignogna case. And that case is going to court. Vic Mignogna is getting more people supporting them by the hour. Kick Vic has made fools of themselves so often that even if there were at least one shred of evidence, the Kick Vickers made such a fool of themselves, nobody's going to believe them. Which is a blight on, you know, the law. But, I mean, Jesus, they just fucked themselves over. They're acting like fools. And the Roots Teeth employees, like, they used to... And one of the reviews, funnily enough, said, you guys aren't a few guys making stuff for Halo with Red vs. Blue. You're full blown. You're full fledged animation company. If you don't know how to fucking do business correctly, while also keeping your workers safe, sound, mentally stable, and paid, you know, don't fuck. Don't bother doing fucking business. Just sit in your fucking podcast and jerk off to each other about how much you care about the family, which you don't, because you're letting this shit happen. I mean, it's just sad. And then Matt Holm, this dumb motherfucker. He states an apology. Now, apology should have been done way earlier, but this is only done after the stuff from Glassdoor was released. Only done after the stuff from Glassdoor was released. That's 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 pretty crazy. Now, let's read his full statements, because this is going to be some bullshit justification. Either this might be some... Uh, I didn't read the whole thing, but... Uh, Basically, the gist of it is, he said that Gray got demoted and we're going to fix it, but the way the timing came out, I don't believe him. It only came out after the glass door shit hit the news because Clownfish TV went after you. Jesus Christ. Fruits of Teeth tries to take down their videos because they, you know, helped expose this to the mainstream public. Man, this is going to be one big stink on Rooster Teeth that might take the company down. So let's read the whole statement. We have seen the recent messages about Rooster Teeth's animation studio related to Crunch, and we want everyone to know we take these concerns seriously. Huh. We acknowledge that we could have better manage our animation pipeline, and we apologize to those who have all been affected. Over the last several months, we conducted a review and have taken several steps to improve communication and workflow to ensure we have a studio where people are happy to come to work every day. We are announcing today new measures on the road to improvement. Effective today, we're moving forward with a previously planned change in our producing and creative studio. Hmm, if it was previously, if it was previously planned, why haven't you fucking done that? You could have already fucking done that. Oh, wait, you weren't going to do it. This was a contingency plan in case somebody decided to blow the whistle on you. And it wasn't even someone blowing the fucking whistle on you. He's stepping down as the head of the studio. For, yeah, but yeah. Gray Haddock is stepping down as head of the studio for animation to dedicate himself with a strictly creative role. Gray's help, we have been... In the process of hiring a new production head of the department who will be responsible for the overall producer hierarchy and staff management. We want to thank Gray for all his hard work and dedication to growing the animation studio over these years and are excited to continue working in them in this new capacity. Uh, another thing, you know that show No Man of Nowhere that at least got somewhat of a cult following in terms of the Rooster Teeth fan base? Yeah, that dude's creator left after the first season and I don't even think he was there to finish the first season because of this bullshit. Like, 
one, they were throwing his crea creative ideas into the garbage, or at least trying to. They wouldn't let him have stuff under his creative control, which if you're Rooster Teeth, why would you? This is the same problem that Monty had with Ruby, was he was trying to do things his way. They let him do it, but then in book season two, they're like, no, we want you to do other things. And he's like, no, this is my show. Why, like, why can't he have creative control? You're an independent company. Okay? Like, Jesus Christ, you're, you're, met, you're messing with, like, Monty Owen, like, in my opinion, he's the animation world's John Carpenter. Where, where he can do really good shit on a low budget. And especially with that fight quality. But, I mean, they, they, fuck, they, they were fucking with him, and after he died... You know, they decided to say screw it, and then they've done did a whole bunch of different shit with the animation, with the plot line, and now it just doesn't make any sense. And then with Nomad Nowhere guy did basically the same thing. Like, why aren't they letting their creators have creative control? Except for Grey! Why? What is with that? Why is it that Monty and the guy who created Nomad of Nowhere can't have creative control over their product? But Gray can. He can do whatever the fuck he wants to, including fire half of the goddamn animation staff. And you don't do anything about it. You don't even demote him for it. Until it becomes a major fucking controversy. What the fuck? What? I just... That's just disgusting. That just shows their bias. They don't care about the workers. They love Grace so much, they don't care if you make shit. They just like him. They have a personal bias towards their employees. They're not trying to have a good, hard, critical look at themselves. Like, if they're not careful, they're going to go under because of this shit. I won't be surprised if we got some lawsuits coming in soon. Further, we are consulting with experienced leaders in the animation industry to work on our workflow, pipeline, production structure, and other areas to enhance the workplace experience of our staff. Margaret M. Dean, the head of Elation Animation Studio and president of Women in Animation, will consult with. Uh, that's why. That's why you wanna you you wanna you wanna you wanna use this to promote a wham to the head structure. That's all you wanna do. You don't wanna actually care about fucking quality. I only, I've never even heard of Elation Animation. Are they good? I don't know. They haven't been part of a fucking thing before. Uh, and. So, but she's going to help them search for a new animation studio lead, and they're going to find someone stupid. We'll always continue to work on improvements to our workplace. We appreciate everyone's support and feedback on the ongoing mission. You mean the mission that is pretty much doomed to failure at this point? I mean, seriously. You guys, are, you guys, whether individual employees or somewhat of the whole company, are going to get screwed up by the Vic Mignogna stuff. I mean, Monica Real, if the rumors were true, if she was the one that was given a bunch of Vic's roles after he got fired from Rooster Teeth, you no, know, also a uh, breach of breach of contract, all that type of stuff, you know, Vic's going to get some serious dough from not only Funimation, but also from you since you've worked with him. And there's also some other stuff going on, too, that deals with the people who own Rooster Teeth. That might also might explain some of the stuff that's going on. AT&T bought Warner Brothers. And at and is really going to constrict that money flow now. Like, when I watched the Crown, Cloudfish TV video, they explained for the first few minutes that, you know, uh, a lot of people are preparing for, like, layoffs and stuff like that. They said Cartoon Network's going to get layoffs and stuff. And, like, at and really going to hammer down on all of their studios which is not a good thing. That's not what you should be doing as soon as you buy a company, but, you know, that's what they want to do. Pretty dumb. But it's, it's AT&T, you're a phone company. Why do you, you want to buy Warner? I, I really don't understand, but, yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing. But uh, apparently there are still people defending this, and I'm just like, fuck off. Richard T should be held accountable for all of this. Because, I mean, that's just too much coincidence. And the shit that's being said and the shit that is, uh, you know, that has been brought up. And all the stuff that's been building up ever since uh, the Shane letter released. 
it's just I just I just don't I don't don't get I just don't get it man all right once again I'm going to reiterate I want Rooster Teeth to succeed I have been a fan of theirs ever since I started watching red vs. blue and I adored the first two books of Ruby but ever since 2015 or maybe sometime earlier than that they have not been they have not been good at least in terms of how they're treating their employees and also how they treat their fans I mean, Jesus Christ they're blocking they're not blocking I mean I'll give it to Rooster Teeth most of their employees aren't blocking people for calling them out on their bullshit except for Gray but they are also it's you know Remember, they insinuate their fans are homophobic for not liking a certain ship in a certain show. Whenever they're trying to give helpful criticism to Ruby, or any criticism for that matter, they are being debased by a certain head, of, not a certain head of studio, but a certain head of a certain show, for not knowing why they're doing things that way and they should shut the fuck up. And then going on a tirade at Full Sail University, a school where people are being trained to use animation that basically fuck, fuck criticism in the most unironic way possible. You know, and then you have, you know, politics. People, your fans are just trying to consume their content, yet they keep spreading politics all over their pages, spreading the, spreading false information, and, you know, lying about and you know considering the stuff that they're posting being complete hypocrites because uh, another one of those glass door posts were like seems that you can only be a white male to be appreciated in the production and I'm just like no oh, that makes sense who's on the majority of their podcast men men white men white women no, those are the ones that represent the company full sale I do not see a colored man. I don't, I don't see a black man, as the EFAP guys call us. Well, call us. <laughs> but call, call African American folk. You know, you don't. You just don't see that diversity. But they're always champion diversity. I mean, they're, ch- they're getting it in their work, but they're not the people who represent the company full sail. I mean,. You know, just, you know, just say it. Rooster Teeth are fucking hypocrites. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't want to. I mean, they, they want to spout all this bullshit. But they don't want to do it. They don't want to compromise their command structure that's been there since they started Rooster Teeth. Which is admirable to a point. But. I mean. Look at the way their employees are being treated. I mean, that's just insane. I don't. I don't see how this stuff that's happening behind the scenes at Roosters, I don't see how this is supposed to benefit the company in any way. I don't see why any company does this. EA, Activision, Rooster Teeth, doesn't matter who. Doesn't matter if it's gaming, animation, or movie entertainment. This shit should not be happening. Okay, now, te- now Texas has certain laws to where you technically don't have to pay paid overtime, but I mean... I mean, that's fine, but if they're being forcefully made to work seven days a week, 80 hour work weeks, then they need paid overtime because that means they're wasting more time than they could be spending at home taking care of their house or their family, you know, spending time with them, okay? People need personal time off. It's like they don't realize that to people who are actually unironically defending this. And it's just ridiculous. Man. Man. And then, like I said, this all stretches back to when to Shane releasing that letter, and then firing Linda's voice actor. Well, voice actress, you know, there's been some shady shit going on for a while, and you know, Muffin Dan Dan, I was like, I agree with this completely. Like a bunch of mainstream critics were looking. There are probably some mainstream critics who were looking an opportunity to get someone with this because you know you know people like unionize the anime industry I think you should 
but it should only be there for a certain amount of time so that way we can at least guarantee they won't fuck with their employees for a while right because I mean you, you don't, don't want to look at it now but I mean, remember the Chicago Teachers Union yeah those guys are fucking idiots but I mean unions are good but it needs to be small scale not super large so that way it's bloated with bureaucracy so that way they can basically jeopardize the entire school system or animation industry in this case because something because they want more money because that's how it is sometimes but Muffin Man Dan was like you know critics looking at uh, Shane's letter like ew no then critics looking at Glassdoor oh yes and it's just you know, there's some there's some shady shit on both ends here, but I mean, for the most part, people who are criticizing Ruby, not Ruby, Rooster Teeth, are rightfully criticizing Rooster Teeth. And I mean, wow. At this point, I think here's what we should do: we should get a high level investor who watches EFAP to buy all shares and stocks in Rooster Teeth. Ends up becoming CEO. Basically, a hostile takeover is what I'm asking for. Is a also take over Rooster Teeth. You buy up all their stocks. You buy them from the company that owns them. You uh, become the CEO. Fire everyone on the front office. Fire all of their head talent. Like keep the people who are just the grunt workers. And, but then, so you fire them. That you don't you don't fire the grunt workers. You don't fire the regular plebs. Well, plebs, I don't, know, I don't know why I call them plebs, but like, you don't fire the regular people. You fire the assholes. You fire the people who need to be fired, that most definitely need to be fired. Like, you stop all their stupid productions. You end Red vs. Blue definitively. You basically reboot Ruby with all those guys, but you also open up another division of Rooster Teeth for EFAT memers. So, all, so that all the people who have made an EFAT meme at some point or time can keep making EFAP memes and get paid for it. That would be the dream. That would be the dream. Alright, because I tell you what, EFAP cares about its audience. Like, they would be the ones I would unironically put at the head of a company. Of a fan bolster company. Because that's what Rooster Teeth should be. Ever since they've been acquired by different people and working under Warner Brothers, you know, they hadn't been the most caring about themselves, and they're deluding themselves into thinking they do. And it's just, it just needs to stop. So, uh, <sighs> Jesus, man, this is a depressing video to make. I mean, I know shit wasn't getting better behind the scenes, and I can sympathize with the stupid crunch because there's some bad, there's some bad crap going on, but. I mean, damn, this is just, this is ridiculous, man. I mean, the, so, so Brewster Teeth is basically, no, Genlock is basically Mass Effect Andromeda Light. All right, because at least with Mass Effect Andromeda, there's a whole lot of other shit in that production. Like, you had Bioware Edmonton fucking with Montreal and apparently stealing their ideas and then unpreparedness from the staff because they didn't realize the scale of what they were going to have to be working on and you had multiple departures and people not actually filling in enough jobs to keep the workflow going like it's just it's pitiful it sucks I mean, I mean that's one of the reasons I sympathize with the people who work on drama not the man beer heirs of the world not those guys but I mean like the actual people putting in the work not the Sam Mags's, but like they were the people trying to put in the work. And this is the same thing here, just to a lesser extent. This isn't a big studio working on a massive IP. Like this is just guys working on an animated show. And it's just, it's, well, at least it's clear where the money went. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, this is just. I'm I'm just massively, massively disappointed. What a what a bunch of massives Rooster Teeth are. That's just bad.